Um, so I am not dismissive of the past with the techniques that have been around for thousands of years. And I also embrace the modern world because modern medicine and modern technology is allowing dentists like me to be minimally invasive and tooth conserving. So I know my lecture was on biomimetic dentistry and we're gonna to touch on that a little bit today, but I wanna do something a little different um, and that is talk about controversies in dentistry and because I get these questions all the time and I'm sure some of you, if not most of you here, at least have one question about one of these things. Click. Thank you. So <clears throat> there are a lot of um, controversial topics and procedures in dentistry and, you know, root canals, fluoride, mercury fillings, composite resin fillings, cadmium indentures, oral galvanism, and nickel in dentistry. So, a lot of people wonder, like, would you put what in my mouth? Like, I have so many patients who uh, are shocked that the materials that are used in our mouth happen to be toxic, and um, they would like to learn more about it. So these are the topics I'm gonna to talk about today. I'm gonna to talk a little fast because there's a lot of information to cover, and I really want to cover everything. Uh, most of my lectures, uh, I never finish them, which is a little unfortunate. So I'm gonna to try to do that today. Thank you. All right. So I think the most controversial um, topic is root canals or our root canals. And um, you know, a lot of pay people don't understand what, what it is. They read a lot of things on the internet. And you know, everything on the internet is, of course, true. And, you know, and there's a lot of misinformation um, out there. And more unfortunately, there's a lot of outdated information. So some of the things you, you read online is true. Excuse me. I shouldn't chew gum when you speak. Um, so we'll start with root canal therapy. Okay, so click. So the two major arguments about root canal therapy. Uh, the teeth are dead and they're, they're harbingers of bacteria. Okay, so we're gonna talk about those two different topics. So let's talk about the dead tooth. Click. So the dead tooth is actually a misnomer. Teeth aren't alive or dead like we are alive or dead. Teeth simply have a, an, alar an alarm system inside of them. So click. So what's inside the tooth? Click. Like I said, it's an alarm system. And the alarm system is the nerve. And the nerve has only one sensation in the tooth, and that is pain. And the reason for that is because the body needed a way to find out if something's wrong with the tooth. So it created an alarm system. It's a living alarm system, but it's an alarm system nonetheless. The tooth still functions like a tooth without the alarm system. It still chews, it still supports your jaw, it still is involved in speech, and it is part of the masticatory system, the chewing system of your, of your mouth, the complicated chewing apparatus. And when you start ripping teeth out of your head, you start disrupting what nature has built. Okay, so click. So the blood vessels inside the, ner inside the pulp of the tooth support the nerve to give it nourishment and the connective tissue inside it holds it all together. And this whole complex of nerve tissue, blood vessels, and connective tissue is called the pulp. Now, if you, are not, if you still think teeth are dead and you don't like dead body parts, then I would suggest you rip all your hair out and fingernails because technically they also are dead tissues. So let's look at the nerve anatomy. Okay. So, when you go on the internet or if you open up a dental book, this is what it looks like. You got a tooth and inside is a hollow space with the pulp tissue com compromised, like I said, of nerve tissue, of blood vessels and connective tissue. Click. But in real life, the system is much more complex and much more intricate. It's not one nerve. It, it has a lot of branchings 
as you can see, oh, sorry, go back. There's branchings, the nerve, nerves come together, they split. It's a three-dimensional, very complicated system. Click. Click. So when nature finds success, it always reproduces the same successful design. So teeth are built like a tree. Teeth are built a lot like uh, the delta in like a river. So you have a main trunk, and then you have branchings. So click. And you can see that here in a three-dimensional picture of a tooth. You have a main trunk, and there's all these little branches. And at the very tip of the root, these branchings are in the hundreds, if not thousands. And you can see that you have branches going in the center of the tooth. You could have branches. And they're all very varied, as varied as the branches of a tree. It's a very complicated system. Next. So as a dentist, when we remove the nerve, because the nerve tissue is, I hate to use the word dead, but basically it's necrotic, it's dissolving, it's infected. We have a basically a long, thin instrument, like a needle, and all we can do is take out the main trunk. And therein lies the problem in root canal therapy because we can only mechanically remove the main trunk. All these little branches are impossible to clean. Next. So traditionally, or conventionally, nerve, the remainder of the nerve tissue and the bacteria in the tooth have been removed by chemical means, predominantly sodium hypochloride which is exactly at like Clorox. In fact, most dentists who want to save money and provide cheaper dentistry don't use the brand name stuff. They go to Wallbaums and they buy Clorox and shove it into your tooth. Next. So let's talk about the bacteria problem. So conventional, like I said, conventional uh, root canal therapy does not remove the bacteria in, and the tissue from the side branches inside the tooth. Next. It's really basically a mechanical instrumentation which only removes the main trunk. Next. And like I said, sodium hypochloride or Clorox bleach uh, is used to digest the tissue from the side branches. That's the best that we've had. Next. The problem is, and the problem with root canals in general, is that bacteria survive in the little tiny microscopic dental tubules inside the tooth. Let's see that. So th these are the little dental tubules. They're microscopic. And you can see a lot of bacteria can fit inside one dental tubule. You've got your yeasts, you've got your bacteria, and you got, and there's billions of them. That's why when you do conventional root canal therapy, the teeth remain infected. And that's why everything you've read on the internet about root canal therapy happens to be true. So let's, so is there a better way? Thank goodness somebody thought of a better way using modern technology, using the laser. So this is called the PIPS technique virtually downward into the canal. Note that the placement of the pip's tip stays stationary above the canal. The laser energy is activated into the tip, creating a series of shock waves traveling down the entire root canal system to its apical terminus. As this photon-induced photoacoustic streaming activity of the pip's mechanism continues, a flushing of smear layer and debris can be seen exiting upward from the canal up into the access opening in the coronal aspect of the tooth. This action has been demonstrated over and over in both experimental test models and clinical trials during the irrigation portion of treatment. The resulting surfaces shown by RSAM studies have demonstrated extremely clean surfaces that leave the dentinal wall surfaces uniquely intact. In fact, due to the non-ablative and remote, distant from the apex, mechanism of action with the PIPS laser protocol, our SEM microscopy has demonstrated both hydroxyapatite and even collagen fibers to remain intact and undisturbed morphologically. 
Traveling further down the canals, we see evidence of lateral canals that are well cleansed and void of tissue and smear layer. The remaining canal preparations show efficacious removal of debris from the entire canal system. This process can be done with less need for over-instrumentation and is extremely minimally invasive. The final preparations offer the clinician a more biomimetic surface for obturation and restorative adhesion. So we finally have a way to clean all the little tubules, all the little side channels inside the tooth, not using mechanical means, but photoacoustic means. It's basically a shockwave. When you throw a pebble into the pond, you see ripples. This is done on a microscopic layer, and what it does is it ruptures the cell, the bacterial yeast fungus cell wall. And it, including the cells that are left from the, from the nerve tissue. When we're done, it's all gone. There are numerous studies and numerous electron microscope images of this happening. You saw a few of them. Next, please. This is real life. This is a kind of a, a man-made tooth with uh, like collagen simulated tissue. So press play, please. And you'll, oh, you'll actually see how it works in real life. <coughs> you can see the liquid, the tissue, the photoacoustic effect, the vibration in the liquid going through all the side channels. And in a one minute application of the PIPS technology using the Lightwalker laser, which is unfortunately the only laser system in the world that has a patent on it. So, but basically, if you fast forward this thing, you'll see all of this is gone. So we finally have a means to clean the entire root canal system and kill all the bacteria in it. In addition, we have something else that does pretty much the same thing, except it doesn't destroy the tissue. But it is another means of killing the bugs dead. And that's ozone therapy. So, that's, so ozone, if you listen to the, the doctor, the good doctor, of course, for me, um, talks about it. He uses ozone therapy for, for other, uh, other techniques, but in dentistry, ozone therapy, what ozone does is it selectively kills single cell organisms, as, such as yeast, fungus, and bacteria, because ozone ruptures their cell walls, but it leaves eukaryotic or mammalian, our cell walls intact, because our cell walls contain antioxidants built into the membrane that neutralize ozone. Isn't that cool? We can kill the bugs and our cells are completely unharmed. Next. So it's safe to our cells. Next. So in addition to the PIPS protocol, because I like belt and suspenders, we then use ozone ozonated water irrigation afterwards. Is it necessary? Probably not. But I want to do this only once to your tooth. I never want to do it again. So, I'm going to wear a belt and suspenders. And then once it's dried, we actually flush the system with an ozone, ozonated gas, pure ozone gas, just because I want to. I don't have a study to back this up, but you know what? I want to kill those bugs dead. Because I leave one bacteria in a tooth, it's going to replicate any every 20 minutes. So, the name of the game is kill the bacteria. Okay, that's 50% of the problem. Actually, it's one third percent of the problem. Then you gotta seal the canal system, okay? And you wanna seal it with non-toxic materials. Not formaldehyde, not arsenic, not formacresol, not other irritating carcinogenic materials, but with a non-toxic biocompatible sealer. Okay. Next. Next. 
So today we have material, it's a bioceramic sealer which actually adheres to this tooth structure. And then we use sterilized, actually bioceramic gutta percha um, that actually bonds the bioceramic sealer. Now I know gutta percha is like an evil word and people think it harbors bacteria, all that stuff. It's true if it's contaminated with bacteria. But if you stick a sterilized bioceramic gutta percha in the bioceramic sealer, it becomes as one unit. And if there's no bacteria to start with, there is no bacteria to be there. So gutta percha is not the problem. It's only a problem if you didn't sterilize it, disinfect it, and shoved a bacteria full contaminated gutta percha into a clean tooth. Then it's a problem. But if you go through a disinfection process and you sterilize gutta percha, it's not a problem. We actually, the last thing is, we dip it into ozonate water. And you, become, you create a monoblock. So the sealer bonds to the tooth, the good aperture bonds to the sealer. Next. Okay, that's one, that's two thirds of the problem solved. There is another problem, which I feel is 50% of the problem of failed and infected root canals. It's the way root canals are finished in the United States. Once you seal the canal system, the dentist, whether it's your general dentist or your root canal specialist or endodontist, sticks a wad of cotton on top of where the nerves are sealed, the canals are sealed, and he sticks a temporary filling. Now temporary fillings are exactly what you think they are. They're temporary. They don't bond to the tooth. Basically, when you close your mouth, bacteria begin to percolate down the sides of the temporary filling, saturate the cotton ball inside, and now contaminate the cement. And you got the infection right back. 99.9% .9 of dentists in this country do it this way. Next. Why? I'll tell you why. I'm embarrassed by it. Money. Most root canals are done by specialists. So if I'm a general dentist and I am referring you for root canal therapy, and then you put a post or seal this tooth now with a core buildup or a post and core buildup, now you're taking money out of my pocket and you're doing a procedure that I could have done and built for. And if you do that once, I will never refer to you again. Because it's about money. And I'm ashamed of it. So in my office, I don't care. I don't care about the money. I care about doing the right thing for my patients and have predictable outcomes. So in my office, my laser trained root canal specialist was taught by me how to properly bond and seal to the tooth. And he seals the system under a sterilized rubber sheet, rubber field, that no bacteria has ever a chance to get into the tooth. Because it's not always about money, it's doing, by the, doing the right thing for our patients. Next. I think I just jumped in there. Okay. So all temporary fillings leak. Next. Bacterial contamination. Next. Okay, next. I already talked about this. Studies show it takes 25 days for the bacteria to percolate from the temporary filling down to the tip of the tooth and into your bone. From the minute you close your mouth, a month later, that system is chock full of bugs. Next. That is why root canals fail years after. But it's not supposed to hurt. But it does. Why? Because there's a bacterial soup in your tooth. Next. This is the cover of last month's second most popular dental journal in the country, the, the AGD journal, a journal that I actually am a peer reviewer for. On the cover are every freaking temporary filling they make. And all this blue shows contamination. Every filling, temporary filling leaks. The only way to stop the leakage is to bond the tooth closed. And that is done only with adhesive bonded dentistry. Next. 
And some people say, well, well, if you do all that, the bacteria will still get into the tooth. Is that really true? Thanks. Does the bacteria from the body recontaminate a well-sealed tooth? Thanks. Or from the mouth? Thanks. I'll tell you what, folks. Whoever told you that does not understand biology. It's impossible. If that was true, then every tooth in your mouth that's alive would be full of bacteria. But it's not. It is biologically impossible to, to recontaminate magically a well-sealed tooth. And if you can prove it to me that I'm wrong, I will change my mind. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I've read all the studies. It doesn't exist. It's impossible. So you can go on conjecture, or you can go on science and biology. I stick with reality. <clears throat> so, what's the solution? Let's sum it up. Seal the tooth with biocompatible, non-toxic cement under a rubber shield. A sterilized or clean rubber shield called a rubber dam. If you have a root canal done without a rubber shield over your tooth, forget it. That tooth is so full of bugs, it's impossible to keep it clean. But you know what? That is actually the standard of care in root canal therapy, using a rubber dam. Guess what? Most dentists are too lazy to put one on. I'm ashamed of it. Seal it from the top with a well-bonded restoration, and you have a tooth that will last your lifetime. Next. So, next. So, remove all bacteria using laser and ozone therapy. Next, under a clean rubber dam field, seal the tooth inside and seal it from the on the outside. That's how you can do a biological root canal using modern technology, a well understand, a, big, a good understanding of biology, and doing what's best for our patients. So dentists that tell you that, oh, the root canal is contaminated, well, you know what? They don't know what's new and available. They don't know the science. And if they're telling you to rip your normal, natural, healthy tooth out of your skull, they are idiots. Run. Next. And second favorite topic, in yours, fluoride, right? Thanks. So what you're looking at is fluorosis. This is the modeling of teeth when you ingest a lot of fluoride, okay? This is kind of an extreme form. If you've got all these little white spots everywhere, probably fluorosis. So. You guys read a lot of things about fluoride. It's the most evil thing on earth. Everything you read about fluoride is actually true. It is the most evil thing on earth. Thanks. Fluorosis, what you saw over there in a poor child, actually has been shown in the study from last year, it did lower IQ levels. It rots your brain. Next. It causes brittle bones. Next. Causes thyroid dysregulation Next. and increases bone cancer risk. Next. This is all true, but whenever you read this stuff on the internet and from the health gurus, it's only and always a, you're talking about systemic fluoride, the type you drink in New York City water the type that's in most American beer, the type in your bottled waters, that's in your juicy juice, and in all kinds of man-made liquid products for consumption. You don't know where it's bottled. It's in your wine, it's in your beer. You're drinking fluoride every day and you don't even know it. Thanks. Here's a problem. Let's talk about what happens when you apply fluoride to teeth. Next. It makes your teeth highly acid resistant. It creates a force field around the tooth, like in Star Wars. Next. It reduces tooth decay. 
has been proven by a gazillion studies. Next. It actually heals early cavities, and those healed cavities are now super duper acid resistant. And fluoroapatite is highly acid resistant. Next. So, right now, what you should be thinking is hope you're thinking this. How much fluoride applied in a one minute rinse or a two minute brushing, a really 30 second brushing, gets transmitted or absorbed by the tissues of your mouth. So, last year when I gave this talk, a woman said to me, but don't your gums suck it up? And I said to her, prove it. Show me the science. Next. Next. Guess what? Doesn't happen. And if you could show me one study that shows that it does, I'll change my mind. Guess what? I've read the studies. Oh, back 30 years. Nothing. When they check it, nothing. So, if you got a tooth decay problem and your teeth are rotting out of your head and you're shunning fluoride, you're making a big mistake. Don't swallow it. Don't eat it. That will kill you. It will hurt your body. It will disrupt your body. But if you apply it to your teeth and spit it out, it will actually help to save your teeth. Next. A little too many effects, huh? <laughs> right. take, home, take home message. Shun systemic fluoride like it's the plague. Water fluoridation, in my opinion, is one of the worst government healthcare experiments on us that has been ever done. Well, and also the hot, the, you know, the high carb diet, that's a whole other situation. So, be careful of the manufactured beverages you drink. I was at a health conference last year, and there's a guy, he's the expert on fluoride, Dr. Kennedy. He orders every beer they make in this bar where we're hanging out. And he's got this portable, gigantic pen-looking machine, and he lined up all the beers, and he starts sticking them with this machine and reading the fluoride content. There were 10 different beers. Eight of them had high fluoride content. You know which ones didn't? Yeah, the ones made in Mexico, because they can't afford to put fluoride in their water. So drink your Corona and Dos Equis, my friends. Because I can guarantee you, it don't have fluoride. But your Budweiser does, and your Amsel Amos does too. So, shun systemic fluoride. It's very dangerous. Filter your water. There's actually a lady next to me, carries an awesome, I just bought two, awesome, awesome portable water bottle. Now you don't have to buy cases of Poland Spring water. You could buy one water bottle that's BPA and BPS free, use tap water from wherever the hell you want, and filter your drinking water. And save the planet, and don't pollute it with plastic. So, I'm gonna chew that. But topical systemic fluoride, topical fluoride plays a significant role in decreasing tooth decay. If you have a tooth decay problem, I encourage you to think twice about not using fluoride. Next. Okay. My next favorite topic, mercury fillings. Okay. The really uh, astute ones of you here will notice some crackages, which we'll get to in a second. Next. So mercury fillings. Next. Most people, shockingly, don't know that mercury fillings contain 50 to 55 percent mercury. So if a product contains the majority of something, we call it that. Cornflakes are called cornflakes because they contain a majority of corn. They're not called wheat flakes. So people call them silver fillings, but they're really mercury fillings because the majority is mercury. Mercury fillings weaken teeth. You saw the cracks? It's not from grinding. Next. 
they crack teeth. They add to oral galvanism, which we'll get to in a little bit, which is basically electrical reactions in your mouth from dissimilar metals. Next. And they're really ugly. Next. The problem with metal fillings, whether the gold, mercury, silver, tin, lead, whatever, is they're not biocompatible to the physics of the tooth. Nature makes things right. Man distorts, disrupts nature. We cannot reinvent the wheel. Nature took millions of years to make our teeth perfect for human beings. We can't make it any better. Sorry, we're not that smart. Next. <clears throat> when you pound your teeth together and you drill away more and more of the flexible, resilient, shock-absorbing dentin, teeth begin to crack. They crack in four ways. By the way, you can have an infinite number of angles and directions of these cracks. So they always break in four ways. If you're really lucky, you'll get a horizontal flat fracture above the gum line, and part of your tooth will just break off. If you're not so lucky, it'll be more vertical, and put the crack can go close to the nerve. And every time you bite, just the right way, you're gonna go out. That means you have an incomplete fracture of the, to of the tooth, secondary to mental fillings. If you're not so lucky, it'll crack into the nerve, and now you got bacteria from your mouth percolating down to the nerve, infecting the nerve and killing the nerve, the nerve. And if you're really unlucky, like me, you bite an olive pit and your tooth goes Now, I didn't have a mercury filling, but I just bit it just the right way. Yes, I'm a toothless dentist. Next. I can't stay, but I want your book from the advertisers. So I'd like to give you a job. <laughs> college, uh, college fund. So, we got Bluetooth. Let me tell you something. I almost can guarantee you that in your lifetime, this baby is going to shatter. Because it's blue, because it's mostly metal. And you're seeing the metal shine through the translucent enamel. And enamel is a rock. And if you guys know about porcelain tiles, when they're not glued to the floor, you can walk on them and crack them. But if you glue them to the floor, you can drive a truck over them. So when your enamel is not supported by dentin, the tooth breaks. The bluer your tooth, the worse its prognosis. I hope you don't got blue tooth. All right, let's... So, let's talk about composite fillings. So everyone's taking out the mercury fillings and they want to get the white fillings, okay? Guess what? It's not the panacea either. So, this is a natural tooth. This is what I call a white amalgam filling, because it, it's done like an amalgam. It's got no shape, no anatomy, just shoved into your tooth with no rhyme or reason, disrespecting nature. This is a, what a filling is supposed to look like, if you care. You can see the outline of the filling. This is done by a dentist who actually cares about nature. He cares about shaping the tooth to mimic nature in its form, because form follows function. All these grooves matter. Nature does not waste energy. Nature does not waste time. Nature perfects for optimal life. Yes, it's my feeling that I did. I care about nature. I care about the teeth. This is an abomination, and I'm embarrassed by it. This is 99% of what's in your mouth. I'm embarrassed by a profession. Next. So what are the concerns of white fillings? They contain bisphenol A, which we'll talk about. 
Some adhesive contain glyaldehyde, a carcinogen. Most are not biocompatible to the tooth physics either. They're very technique sensitive. You, you can't just drill a hole and slop something in there like it's a mercury filling, because any idiot can do that. Like to do white filling, you have to have a very precise understanding of the organic chemistry of each specific material you use, and you have to respect the physics and the shrinkage, and there's a lot of thought that goes into adhesive dentistry. And if you treat it like a like a amalgam filling, you're gonna have problems. And the other problem is the bond degrades with time. Next, BPA. God, I'm gonna have to read this because <laughs> BPA is a potent estrogen mimicker. And more than 200 lab tests to date have strongly suggested that a BPA exposure, even at very low doses, creates risks, creates risks of dangerous developmental, neural, and reproductive health effects in infants and children. Exposure to BPA, even at low and short-term doses, is linked to a staggering number of health problems in adults and children. Should I read all of them to you? You could look it up on the internet, but it's scary. So I guess you, glyaldehyde is a, is a major component in some adhesive systems. Why? Because it mummifies tissue. Because if you're a sloppy, careless dentist, if you do fillings wrong, if you bond incorrectly, if you don't understand how it works, you will have test sensitivity after your fillings. So they try to numb, mummify the, the tissue in the tooth so to avoid that. So you can be sloppy, this is one way around it, putting carcinogen into your tooth, into your body. Smart, huh? Next. It's the wrong physics. It's the opposite of metal fillings. White fillings, most of them, are very flexible relative to the tooth. So when you bite down on your tooth, your fillings deform more than the tooth. And eventually, that incongruity rips the bond. Next. 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 When the bond rips, bacteria get in. Next. And with the white bonded fillings no longer support the tooth. Next. Next. Skip this, this line, it's already talked about this. Next. 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 So white fillings don't last as well as mercury fillings because they have the wrong properties and the bonds degrade over time and they're too flexible and they leak and they get recurrent decay. Next. What do we do? Is there a good solution to fix our rotting teeth? There is. Next. The answer is biomedics. Biomedics is mimicking biology. That's what it means. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You live in a great time. There are few companies out there that make dental materials that have similar are almost identical properties to the natural tooth. That's it. Guess what? There finally is an adhesive that does not cause degradation of the bond. Next. So if you understand how nature builds teeth and how teeth work under function, and they work differently in different layers of the tooth, and if you measure where you are in the tooth and choose materials accordingly to mimic the flexibility and use materials of similar thermal expansion and contraction as the tooth, you can synthetically mimic nature. Next. And if you see they're really messed up by mercury fillings and full of cracks, guess what? We have a way to reinforce those cracks 
with a very interesting fiberglass mesh. You can mimic the tooth. Thanks. And that way you can achieve harmony with nature, which is what life is, to me is all about. You can build the inside like nature, and then you can build the outside to mimic how nature builds it. And they're pretty, because they look like teeth. Next. So there is a way to do this, and I... My path to holistic dentistry began with biomimetic dentistry. Um, it changed my life. I began respecting nature and appreciating her, and embracing nature. And that's been a journey of the past six years. So, <clears throat> what I what I strongly believe is that you, the consumers, will make the change happen. Let me tell you, I spent the past six years begging dentists to learn this approach, and they don't give a shit. They don't care. They want to do it faster and cheaper because insurance doesn't pay for it. They don't care. And it drives me crazy because I love dentistry. I love being a dentist and I'm embarrassed by my profession. The change has to come from the people, from you. That's why I'm sitting here talking to you. I don't like public speaking, but I feel I have to. I feel you are the change. Look what's happening in the world. Everyone's going gluten free. Everyone's eating organic. And guess what? Even Wolbams has gluten-free this and gluten-free that. It's not just Whole Foods and Trader Joe's anymore. Why? Because you, the consumers, are demanding the change. And if your dentist does not know what biomedic dentistry is, you tell her or her to Google it and learn it and use it. Because if you don't, you'll go to Dr. Schwartzman. That's why. So. Be the change, please. I am one of the founders of the Academy of Biomimetic Dentistry. I had to, I felt I had to form this organization with a, six other crazy dentists like me because I wanted to educate the dentists, but we failed miserably. Now I want to educate you. I want you to be the change. All right, the next ones are really quick. Cadmium indentures, tox metal, if you got a pink denture, it's got cadmium in it, it's as simple as that. You're sucking on cadmium for all these years. Guess what? 2013, right here. Now we got BPA, BPS, unbreakable aesthetic cadmium free materials. They're clear, they're not pink, but they're translucent. They allow your pink gums to go to shine right through. So if you are African American and your gums are a little darker, you don't have to walk around with weird looking pink eyes that don't belong in your mouth. You could you understand what I'm saying? It's clear. It'll show what you are and what you're supposed to be naturally. And it's not gonna poison you. That's Okay, all galvanism, real quick. Everyone's afraid of metal in their mouth, and for good reason. Why? Because when you next combine similar metals and connect them by a liquid with ions in it, you create a battery. Electricity. Next. So if you have a mixture of amalgam fillings, gold fillings, metal crowns and bridges, metal partial dentures, titanium dental implants, wired retainers, metal braces, and oral piercings, man, it's a party in your mouth. Thanks. Galvanism, electrogalvanism, causes metal corrosion. Next. If you got mercury fillings in your mouth, man, you are leaking mercury. Next. Oral galvanism has been implicated in oral cancer, oral ulcers, metallic taste in your mouth, and unexplained pain. This is well documented for 70 years. Next. Actually, I'm lying to you. About 
two hundred years ago. All right, another fun material to have in your mouth: nickel. Nickel is predominantly in braces and metal alloys of the cheap kind. Yes, the ones that are made in China and Pakistan and Costa Rica and it's some really shitty labs in the United States. Thanks. 25% of women are allergic to nickel. Next. 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 Guess what? We got Invisalign, a BPA, BPS free way to move teeth. That is as good, if not better, than nickel containing train tracks. Next. Oh, sorry, go back, sorry. Invisalign is awesome. I used to do braces back in the day. Yes, I used ceramic brackets and I used specially coated wires. But, Invisalign came out. And over the past 10 years, I started using Invisalign more as I got better. And today, actually two years ago, I have abandoned metal braces altogether and I do everything with Invisalign because it's that good. Next. And you have a gazillion different all ceramic materials available today. Next. You don't have to have metal crowns anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Not even bridges. There are strong, aesthetic, biocompatible ceramic options today. Next. They can be done in one visit in our office now using CEREC technology. Next. They're pretty. Next. And they will not cause electricity in your mouth. Next. Thank you. We did it. Be the change.